the Phil Spencer GTR interview brings forth two major revelations that everyone seemed to miss. What are they? Let's talk about it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy MM2K back again with another video. Do me a huge favor before we get into this one. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up, because y'all know the deal. I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. All right, so um, this past week, Phil Spencer sat down with Gamer Tag Radio uh, for their thousandth, thousandth episode. And um, there were some things that were talked about. A lot of focus from a lot of these media publications in regards to what he has said about VR and what he said about, you know, how he doesn't want to leave one, any gamer left behind, you know. But they're not focusing on two major points that I think was released in that video. So let's go from here. First major point is there was a big revelation made about the question of parity off the bat. They, they started off with that question and some major details were, were released as far as what their approach is in, in, in that regards. And secondly, we have another foot in the mouth moment from Phil Spencer and it, 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 just, it just proves something that has been said. But let's first go over the parity issue. Right. So right off the bat, GTR asked Phil Spencer about the whole parody issue. And for those that don't know what I'm talking about, Xbox Series X at release will not have console exclusives. Okay. The first time that an Xbox console will launch without any, uh, normally there's like a couple of console ex exclusives, whether they're first party or second party, that try to, you know, give you a glimpse into what the capabilities of or the heart of the hardware that can't be done on any prior console. They won't have any of that. Um, the moniker that was echoed because of this is the gamer not left behind. But you had a lot of people that said, don't worry about it. Xbox will be able to scale things up, you know what I'm saying? Or scale things down um, because of the new X86 architecture and all this other stuff. But people like Digital Foundry have put question to that and put that to the test and said, hold on. You may have been able to do that with fidelity and graphics, but we're talking about gameplay implementation. You know, things that are in, let's say for instance, uh, Dead Rising uh, 3, for the Xbox One, that if Dead Rising for the uh, three came out for the Xbox 360, just wouldn't have been possible. The same thing with Rise, you know what I mean? What about gameplay implementation? So the question was about bounced back to those people talking about scaling. Nobody had an answer. Finally, it was posed to feel as it should have been. All right, so kudos to them for doing that. So Phil says some interesting things, and it took him over three minutes to answer the question. But he was basically asked, okay, for those that have questions about parity, what do you have to say about it affecting content that normally would have been exclusive to the console? Or are you guys skimming anything out in order to do so? And here's what Phil has to say in specific chunks that I thought was relevant. Um, he's basically saying overall that there will be trade-offs to focus more on people playing with their friends. So here's what he says specifically. Um, depending upon which platform you're listening to the show in, around nine minutes and 32 seconds into the um, interview, he says that he wants to put players at the center, not putting devices at the center. At 10 minutes and 32 seconds, he says, highest fidelity experiences on your TV. I want to make sure that you can do that. Around 11 minutes and 27 seconds, he mentions that a PC scalability regarding fidelity again. But lastly, this is the most imperative part. At 12 minutes and 10 seconds in roughly, he says, but you don't want to do that Do that to the exclusion as far as, um, you know, giving people fidelity. You don't want to do that in an exclusion of everyone else. But yes, there are trade-offs in what you'll be able to do in every single game. So if you listen to the whole interview, if you listen to that old segment, he's basically saying we have uh, every gamer strategy at launch. We want everybody to be able to play our first party games, uh, albeit any Xbox One console that you have. 
We're going to do our best to allow people to crank up fidelity. But as far as gameplay in, in implementation, yeah, there's going to be trade-offs. Like you're, there are certain things that because we're letting the Xbox One people play, you know what I'm saying? That we're not going to be able to implement certain things. But we think it's more important that we cut those things out so everybody can can enjoy said game that we make first party. That answers the question. So everybody out here that's spitting, oh, well, parody, there is no parody. There is parody, but he has a more important strategy. So if you're going to argue what Phil's arguing, at least argue it from a place of knowledge. But that question is done. So for those of you that are looking for what has happened in the past, you know what I'm saying, where Xbox showed you, you know, okay, this is what the box can specifically do. This game is only for this. You're not getting that this time around. So that should factor into your decision making. But if you're just worrying about bumped up resolutions and you want to play with your friends, go ahead and get the box. But that answer has finally been, I mean, that question has finally been answered and I'm glad that they posed that to him. So kudos to them. All right. The second thing, the foot in your mouth is where, let, let, let me do this. Let me go to this article first from gameindustry.biz, one of my favorite uh, uh, mainstream publications. All right. And this is where they took snippets of the interview and they broke it down. They're talking where Phil Spencer reads, Phil Spencer, there's no slide deck to, um, that says we want to turn everyone into a subscriber. You know what I'm saying? So he says something in the interview where he's trying to answer the question about people saying that Xbox just doesn't care about individual game sales anymore, a la carte purchases, that they only care about making you a subscriber. That's his response to this. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think there's, but it goes into how he breaks it down. That is always the problem for Phil. So let me go to it. So this is actually a snippet from the interview. Quote, there is no slide deck anywhere that says we want to turn everyone into a subscriber and no one should buy, he said. That's why sometimes when people use Netflix of games, I bristle a bit because Netflix doesn't sell the content that's in Netflix. For us, if people want to go buy games, we think that's a really healthy part of the industry. Here's the problem with that. If you bristle at the fact of people calling Netflix and making the equivalency of Netflix to xCloud, you have only yourself to blame. And that should have been made clear. Maybe you 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 don't have an ability during the proper times to acknowledge, hey, we're doing a pivot, being fully transparent. Like it's us that we created this moniker. Now, for those of you that are saying, what does he mean, bristle? Well, you wanna brush his hair? No, no, no. The textbook definition of bristle, as you can see here, let me let me just boost this up a little bit for those that are watching the video. Um, in, the, in, in the context that he's using it, react angrily or defensively, typically by drawing oneself up here goes an example. She bristled at his rudeness. That's the context. Of, so he's he cringes pretty much at when people use the Netflix of gaming. Here's the problem with that, though. Exhibit A, Business Insider article from June 6, 2019, where Microsoft calls the service, referring to xCloud, the Netflix for games. <laughs> Second, it's, uh, uh, exhibit number two. All right. From Business Insider, what date is this? Uh, June 27th, 2019. Now, originally here, they said that they call it Netflix and gaming internally, but they're no longer doing it, doing it internally. Quote, we describe it as shorthand Netflix for games. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella told journalists at an invitational editors meeting at Microsoft headquarters in January. All right, then y'all may be thinking to yourself because y'all are in y'all typical damage control mode. Y'all mad at my last videos to everybody started unsubscribing. Y'all y'all knows moves. Y'all don't want to hear the truth. Y'all don't want to hear the truth, but you still going to get the truth here. All right, for those of y'all that hung around, y'all still going to get the truth. You want to know what the truth is? Because this is what I, I can hear y'all right now. Phil didn't say that. Phil didn't say that. Boom. All right. Here where he's having an interview with GameSpot, Flip, Phil talks about Project xCloud and He's making references to Netflix. Quote, let's take Netflix, which is 24 years old. I think we forgot that sometimes because tech moves so fast, it's 20 year old at this point. So it took two decades for us to get to the point where shows like Game of Thrones and House of Cards are some of the biggest shows on the planet. So he's making the reference to Netflix in comparison to why maybe Project X Cloud may take some time before it gets to its retail form, right? But he didn't say it was the Netflix of game in MM2K. I still got my armor on. You ain't knocked my uh, my uh, damage control shield and armor off. 
boom, goes the dynamite. Interview with Phil Spencer back in 2017 that started this all. Xbox Chief, we need to create a Netflix of video games. <laughs> Look, man. Oops. Y'all got me so excited. I'm all over my soundboard all over the place. Look, here's the deal, y'all. Here's the deal. Um, This is why I wholeheartedly say that Phil Spencer has to produce and not talk. I don't care anything that Phil Spencer has to say. This is not Phil Spencer eight, uh, hate. This is Xbox expectation from a, from a consumer. So y'all can go on about the Bibblewatts and the Gigahertz. This guy's all over the place. He just simply is, okay? And y'all can follow him off that cliff, but as a consumer, where I'm being asked to pay an additional five to $600, when you told me when I paid the last $500 that software was key to the release of the X and you didn't have any comparable software that showed the power of the box. The, as my brother post up says, make the box sing. You haven't done that. You know what I'm saying? Until like the latter part of 2019 with gears. You know, you kind of got there with gears. That being said, you can't blame me for not fitting in this box where I believe everything filled. Xbox solely has to produce and when they produce, then I'll react. That being said, got two things going on here. Number one, Bill Spencer doesn't care to that he's sacrificing for parity in relation to the Xbox because their strategy is different, it's unique, and it's, it's all about gamers playing together. Where I say to myself, if that's the case, then I'm not buying the next Xbox. If I wanna play an Xbox game, I'll get it on my PC or I'll get it on my, uh, um, I'll, get, I'll play it on my old device and people may listen to that and may say, well, Xbox doesn't care. But here's the thing. Um, if I, when, when you buy a new box, when you make that initial investment, it draws you into buying more software, which Microsoft makes more money off of. If I don't have a draw into your ecosystem, like if I can just get things cause they're there, I'm less likely to pick it up. I'm like, ah, it, it can wait. But if I made that investment, if you got me to pay five, $600 for your box, you best believe I'm looking for games. So you kind of detract from me investing more into your ecosystem that you may want me to do. And if I'm buying games a la carte, like it looks like I appear, I'm, I may be, because I don't see nothing from Microsoft that's knocking my socks off right now. Um, if I'm buying games a la carte, then I, I don't care about Game Pass. I just don't care. Your for, your day and date software is not up to par to make me say, ooh, I need to spend my money on that. Um, and your the old games that you have in there, I already bought them myself. I bought them a la carte. And then when it comes to the casual, the casuals aren't flocking to this thing in massive droves because none of the old games that are in there are on your top play games. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a great deal to propose, but in order to make this thing that the big boom and success that you need it to be, all services like this has to have excellent day and day content. And until they get that, it's it's not gonna go where they need it to go. So with that said, that's it from your boy MM2K. Let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Cause like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the broadband bullies, PNTS network, hard knock digital culture, and as well the stadia dosage. And with that said, you know you how you you know we we go oh uh, we come over everything. Nothing will be missed, no stone will be unturned here on this channel. But y'all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.